All right. So uh, uh, let's let's. So today we we're focusing on um, the idea of reduced models to generate brain to, or to generate signals that resemble what you can observe in uh, the brain. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the plan of, of the talk. Uh, I will come back uh, with uh, rhythms in the brain. So there are uh, observations of rhythms in the brain. So uh, you heard that before, but I will repeat that again. Uh, then uh, we will see how are uh, systems, just simple systems with periodic, uh, periodic systems, but you, you add some noise and how are they relevant to, 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 to it's a bit of mathematics, simple math computations and a discussion, uh, how are they relevant to uh, simulate brain rhythms? Then we'll see another uh, model uh, we, which was introduced in part one of, uh, of this lecture. And we will, uh, we will see uh, more in detail uh, how it is relevant in neuroscience context. So again, uh, these things are been, have been presented very uh, quickly in, in the first part, and we are going back to, uh, to study it more in details. And the last part is, uh, <coughs> is about uh, so the system introduced in part in, in three is uh, it has uh, some slow fast uh, structure and you have a nice um, mathematical uh, phenomena uh, which uh, relates to uh, the entry exit problem and we will discuss also a little bit about that. So let's move to the point one. Um, so you, you've seen that in part one. So again, there are rhythms that are observed in the brain. So who says rhythm says mathematical signals, mathematical functions, and we can try uh, to uh, reproduce, uh, reproduce that. Um, okay, and uh, so it's important. So this slide is to say, it is here to say that uh, these things are important and are uh, relate to very uh, important behaviors that touch us in every day. So uh, mental states, uh, disorders, uh, cognitive activities. I say cognitive, it can be uh, the sight, it can be uh, what you hear, it can be what your thoughts, it can be your emotional states. You can look through that. And so it's an active current uh, research topic to uh, link rhythms with that. There, are, there is also this idea, a very, very uh, active also topic of research. Uh, I heard some talks, uh, for example, in the, in the, in the, 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 the psychiatry. So, uh, in, in, in patients with some psychiatric uh, condition, uh, they study the synchronization, right? Uh, in, in some parts of the brain and they relate that to, to some uh, conditions. So uh, another well-known example is synchronization um, when you have epilepsy, okay? Uh, of course, we are not going to, to say that, but uh, again, this slide is here to emphasize that those are uh, important topics that, re that relate to uh, concrete pro problems that affect people in, in uh, daily lives, okay? But today we'll focus on rhythm, right? So, um, a slide about uh, what we're talking about. Uh, so we're talking about uh, neuronal signals, but 
there are different scales at which we can measure uh, the, the signals. So uh, the, the oldest uh, measures uh, are EEG. So EEG, you, you, you have typically 32 electrodes that cover uh, the wall skull. And so uh, these are signals about, um, they, they say something about a global field in, in, in the wall uh, skull. And so the, the, the signals that you observe have a typical amplitude of 50 microvolts. And so, um, yeah, but it, it's, it's a large scale, it's a big scale, okay? Uh, there are other uh, tools, but those are um, very uh, used uh, tools. Then you have the um, LFPs, so um, local field potential. So as it says, it's not a global, it's, it's local and uh, it's about uh, three millimeters, right? So you typically it records a mean, it, it's believed that it records a mean of the activity electrical activity of, of, uh, of a population uh, of neurons, okay? And so um, you have other tools to, to, measure, to measure that. And so here the amplitude is, is more, it's 500, right? And then you, you go, uh, if, you, if, you, if you record at the, um, at the level of, of single neurons, uh, this is the Hodgkin Axler, for example, for uh, the giant squid. Uh, then uh, the order is, is millivolts. Okay, so these represent three different scales uh, that will give you uh, signals. Of course, they are related, but how they are related, uh, this is a big question also. Um, all right, just some historical, uh, uh, historical, um, let's, okay, can I move that? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so uh, this, uh, um, so first EEG uh, recorded in, in humans. Uh, it's, uh, it's this Dutch, no, this yeah, German guy, um, Hans Berger in 1924, and this is the alpha signal, right? Uh, this is a periodic signal, and this is the recorded signal. So yeah, you can see typically a rhythm, right? You see, you have a rhythm, and uh, it's, uh, you can see by, with your naked eye that the, the frequency is, is, is uh, it, it's, it looks like the 10 Hertz. Um, okay, and this is a modern output of a EEG recording. So you have, as I said, uh, 32, 32 electrodes, and uh, you have some uh, electrical um, uh, circuits, and you can record uh, these signals on each electrode. And you can see rhythm for them. Here you have beta, here you have theta, uh, this is when the eye blinks. So you have a, what we call an artifact. Uh, here you have alpha. Okay, so you say, and you can observe waves. You can, you can observe waves. Um, so this is a big, big, big also uh, topic of research. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So next, next, next slide. All right, so as I said, since you have measurements, you can do math and uh, actually uh, you need when you also, even to, to get your signals, there's a big part which involves Fourier series, wavelets, a uh, bunch of things. Um, and, um, so what I'm going to talk about is, is related to, uh, it's uh, the third time I, I, I speak about those, those guys, uh, but um, 
Yeah, the, the, this is an interesting work about the uh, uh, net mathematical models of networks of ODEs of thousand of ODEs, and uh, you can see that they talk about the rhythm. This will be gamma rhythm and synchrony in um, a network model. Um, so just to recall, uh, she is a well-known mathematician. Uh, he is a very uh, skilled uh, uh, math, uh, but with very high computational skills. And this is a neuroscientist. So uh, three of them as is uh, just them, because I know a little bit more they work, but of course there's a lot of collaborations which involve neuroscientists and mathematicians and you did uh, computational skills uh, to, to do uh, this kind of works. Um, all right, so uh, what, what, come, what, what come up from, from this kind of work is what uh, you observe gamma frequencies, right? And this is, has been uh, of continuing interest in neuroscience. That is a bunch of papers. Uh, Buzaski is very known for his work on synchronization also. Uh, Okay, uh, often uh, it's at the local field uh, scale, okay, local field potential. Um, okay, so when nothing is, is done, um, you observe uh, a free, uh, uh, um, uh, one, so uh, inverse low for the, po the, the PSD. So this is a Fourier transform basically. Yeah, like, so it's about frequencies. So you, you have uh, an inverse function. Uh, okay, so, okay. Um, but but so, so uh, the inverse function is for what? Is for the you 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 take a, a mean. You take the mean. I, I will I will give more data later. But it's a mean of the frequencies observed in a signal. Uh, that you, you you frame with a window uh, and it's a mean, and uh, so where it's nothing, uh, your brain is not stimulated, so it's hard to say what does it means. But for the visual cortex, for example, you you don't present some signal uh, to the to the, the the subject, and you have uh, the the frequency which is in inverse low, but when you, your cortex is activated by a stimulus, for example, the visual cortex, then you can see a bump uh, here in the gamma band uh, frequency. So the, the, there are a bunch of paper uh, on that. Okay, but uh, so uh, here, what's the point? It's just, uh, well, just a discussion about what so when you observe a signal, um, you have a, a you have a, a rhythm, but it's not oscillatory. Okay, it's not regular. It's not a cosine function. Uh, it's a broadband, meaning that uh, it's not narrow. The, the 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 gamma spectrum is not narrow. So I will present some picture. Hopefully this will become more clear, and it wanders. So. Um, Frequencies and phases go back, go uh, back and forth, and the bits also the amplitude of of the signal uh, varies also. So uh, it might be high, it might be low. So this is to say, the question is, uh, is is the, um, is it right to to stimulate it by a pure oscillatory uh, dynamics? And that, that's the dis discussion uh, that we want to, to bring. And so now you're going to start to work. Um, so, and uh, we start with this very simple uh, system. And um, so this system can, when you, you, you go to, uh, for example, polar coordinates, it gives you that. And so, um, it's uh, so this, if you do nothing, uh, 
will have a, a, a two pi periodic solution asymptotically. But uh, if you want to work in, in gamma, you can just slow down uh, the speed by three, uh, which, which gives you roughly speaking uh, 50 Hertz. So uh, I propose you to, to prove this thing. Uh, can you prove that asymptotically the, the solutions of this system uh, is that? Okay, so let's do this uh, simple computation. Uh, so you just write this. Okay, so the idea is just to sum up the first equation uh, to i, so i is the complex number i of the second, so you get uh, x plus i y prime equals x plus i y. And so minus y, so you will get plus i x plus i y minus x square plus x square x plus i y. All right. So uh, if you you said that uh, x plus i y equals r exponential i theta, uh, then you get that uh, r e i theta prime equals r E i theta plus E r theta minus, so this is r square. And so you get minus r to the third E i theta. Um, all right, so, um, so I rewrite just that r E i theta prime equals, yeah, um, r minus r to the third e i theta, theta plus r i e i theta, right? Yeah, uh, so, but this is, this part is r prime e i theta plus i, R E I theta theta prime, and now if I uh, I can just simplify by this here, and I will identify the real part here with the uh, uh, complex part, and I get R prime equals R minus minus R to the third, uh, and theta prime equals one. Okay, and you can compute that explicitly, right? You can compute that explicitly. And so you can see that uh, if, if our node is non-zero, which corresponds to the stationary point, then uh, when t goes to infinity, r of t equals one. And so theta of t from there, equals theta of zero plus t, right? So yeah, you, you can compute explicitly uh, uh, just uh, simply here. Um, it's not, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, this, All right, I know. Um, yeah, so when you have 
when you are r prime equals r minus r to the third, uh, you have two stationary points. Uh, which are r equals zero and r equals one. And so if you call that f of r, you have a prime of zero, which is one. So zero is unstable and f prime of one equals um, one minus three equals minus two. So one is stable and in fact you can exactly compute as i said uh, the exact solutions and um, and so every every solution go converges to r of t equals one and you have theta which is theta zero plus t okay so um our system has a strong attractor to a periodic solution Okay. All right, so, uh, so you have here that uh, every solution uh, that, is, that, don't, that doesn't start at zero, zero is asymptotic to uh, this cosine and sine uh, functions. All right, and now uh, because the, um, of course, in, in the brain, uh, the signals are not exactly uh, periodic. So uh, the idea, and, and it might be efficient in some, in some ways, but we want to discuss, um, it is sufficient to consider a periodic solution plus noise, right? So uh, this is the SDE. And here, this is the Brownian motions, okay? Um, and so uh, we are going to consider uh, these equations. And um, yeah, that's what we observe here. Um, so those are uh, the signals observed. Uh, I think this is V, uh, V and for different values of mu x equals mu y, mu i and for mu equals 0, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5. Uh, this is the same thing in the uv variable. Um, on the right, uh, this is one signal uh, taken from uh, Schariker and all model. Uh, so we try to reproduce this kind of, of things, okay? Um, Yes, yeah, so uh, first of all, u and v here. Uh, so, uh, so different things. So, so first, let, let's just look at one of them. Um, you have a rhythm, you see, but uh, it's not like that. Uh, this, is, this is not bad, but uh, <coughs> uh, you lose somehow, you lose the, um, you somehow the 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 reason you, you you will see that um okay so what i propose you to do is to see how to how to do uh how to do you have to try to to you have to see how to reproduce this kind of stuff so let's do some numerics so So let's have a look at the, um, at the code uh, with which we reproduce the, the, um, the signals. So this is basically an ODE. Um, so here, what you have. Here, you, you, you have your ODE. So you can see that this is x minus y minus x times the norm square of x and y. Okay, so this is our system. There's a gamma because um, if you if a system is two, p, two pi periodic, 
uh, it, it, it gives you um, um, so uh, so if it has a period of around six six um, then in um, so the, the so the um, the frequency will be much more higher than what we need. So we need to slow down. So that, that's why you have here a, a gamma of uh, 0.3. Uh, this has nothing to do uh, with gamma rhythm, but yes, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, we need that to, to slow down uh, the rhythm, okay? And uh, of course, so this is to simulate the Brownian motion. So this is a classical way uh, to simulate uh, the um, a normal a normal uh, variable, a random variable on, on the square, and uh, from there you 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 will just have your um, your von Schutten method, but uh, you need to add uh, this this uh, these stochastic terms here, right? Because W, as you can see, uh, it's a vector and uh, it's here. All right, so uh, let's do that. We are going to uh, simulate this one. Uh, yeah. So I just run the system and wait. So it has to go uh, uh, till 5,000. Um, and here 5,000 represents five seconds in neuroscience time. All right, done, done, done. So now, as usual, uh, let's, for example, represent um, between 1,000 and 2,000. Let's represent uh, our solution here. Okay, so this is our solution. But uh, uh, in comparison with what we look for, it's too much periodic, okay? And also the, um, the amplitude is, is, is always almost the same. Okay, so uh, yeah, we can have a look also in the, X and Y at the same time. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right, so that's um, that's in the X Y uh, variable. Okay, so uh, this is our uh, assertion of our SDE um, for for understanding purpose, we can um, try, is that this one? Yeah. Um, we can try to just see little by little what's uh, going on. Okay, so uh, yeah, you, you start this way. I know that because uh, your dynamics go, goes like that. Uh, so you start here, and and so you have to, the combination of two uh, directions, one stochastic and one deterministic, and so you go like that. Yeah, 
it's a, so it's a bit random, but uh, it's still periodic. Uh, and can increase the, the time uh, from which we, we look at it. Uh, let's say, let's say that. All right, so uh, I just increase, so I start somewhere from where there, or maybe there, and I go like that. Yeah, I started here. I go like that, and I, and I follow, I follow my my dynamics, but uh, in in a random way. Okay, so I guess we have a, approximately uh, one cycle here. All right. Um, uh, so now uh, we can compute also, uh, and we will see the the freak the 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 PSD. It's the Fourier transform. So let's see what 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 about the frequencies. So if I want to do the the frequencies, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to I I, I just uh, need to um, retrieve one part of the signal. So. What I'm doing now is from from my data, I just keep v v of t. So to do that, I, I have a small program here that I run, and so now um, I obtain here uh, a, a, a file which is called uh, something like v, oh, uvv, this one. And then this one, I put it on another file, which is here. And because I have done it already before uh, the session, and so it's here, it's the same, right? And this file now, with this file now, I will, uh, I will run, I will run, uh, this program here. So this is a Python program. Uh, the thing is, uh, it's it's useful to to do some um, because it's standard. So now you have a, a tool that you can compare because uh, a lot of people use that. So we are all doing the same. So we can compare the things. So and uh, um, here, so we you 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 see here appear that your file appear here. And you do some 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 things, and you compute the PSD, right? So the PSD, what what is done here? So you compute the Fourier uh, coefficients, but on a, 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 a window that varies across time, and you do the mean. So what you obtain it's the a, a mean of the frequencies of your uh, moving window, okay? So uh, let's run this program now here, okay? And I run here my program, and this is what I obtain, what I obtain. So you get a frequency of 50 and uh, um, that's what we have. <coughs> so, but your your frequency here, um, yeah, it's it's too it's too nar nar narrow. Okay, uh, we look for something uh, a little bit uh, less narrow, and uh, so we, we need signals more irregular. So let, let's go back to the to our our um, slides here. So we've seen how, we have seen how, um, how to run uh, this kind of things and to how to compute the PSD, All right? That's what we've seen uh, from the numerics. Uh, so I showed you the first row of A and the first, uh, uh, the first row here in A and B basically. And, and and in the right, those are uh, some um, measurements or or or, or some signals uh, coming from much more elaborated or realistic models. All right. Um, 
okay, and, and here, uh, that's the PSD that we obtain uh, when uh, we increase uh, our mu. Um, okay, so here you have a, a big peak at 50. So this is kind of what you observe during uh, experimental measurements. But the signal here is, is way too much uh, regular. Uh, this is not too bad, the less, but here uh, you lose your, 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 your bump in the frequency, okay? Okay, but uh, of, of course there's a problem. Uh, the problem is when you go back here, uh, you know, this R, um, so no, this, this, this velocity, the angular velocity does not depend on R uh, because it, you have only one here. It's always one. So um, it's just a computation on the deterministic part, okay? It will be good to do these things uh, more theoretically on the also the, the stochastic model, but that's what you observe. It, it's too much regular. So we can try to um, change our system and then our, uh, our theta depends on R. So you see here the angular speed depends on R. So again, uh, I propose you to, to do this small exercise, how from this system you go to that one, okay?
Est-ce que j'ai ma mouche All right. So, um, yeah. So, from the computations now, uh, we have the we have we, we, we saw that uh, now our angular speed depends on r, and this uh, gives more uh, irregularity uh, in in the signals. Uh, and you can see that on on those slides uh, here. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, so you can see that sometimes you wait um, to have some this this these bumps. So meaning that you you know the 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 time between these the maximums varies much more than before. Uh, another way uh, is to to choose uh, a non-symmetric vector mu on that and those are the the corresponding um psd um all right uh that's that's not so bad but that's not uh, what we're looking for uh, so um okay so so it's uh, it's interesting to study this thing but uh, we look for something more so now what we are considering is the two-dimensional ODE. Uh, and at some point, we will uh, vary three parameters that will allow us to have control on frequencies, amplitudes, and uh, the degree of degeneracy, meaning that uh, sometimes the rhythm disappears a little bit and then comes back. Um, so and uh, really the, the some part of the ideas come from uh, this simulation of of uh, these uh, networks of excitatory and inhibitory and when you see that the ge and the gi are very well correlated so you can obtain that with very uh, simple uh, models and this is related to the uh, e and i bal balance as you can see here, uh, it resembles that. And those are from a more complicated model, but you have also this correlation between GE and GI. All right, so the model that we propose is, is this one. Um, it's kind of fits because, because you have a cubic and you have, um, uh, this line here, so, but uh, it's different. It's different because um, you can see that you u and v uh, so you, you, you have some um, invariant uh, lines on the axis. And so it's between um, the fitzhugh nagumo model and also the Leslie Gore equations, which are equations that come from, um, uh, yeah, prey predators uh, models. All right. Um, so you can prove that as an exercise that if you start with u and v positive, you will stay there uh, because, be, because if you choose u equals zero, then it remains there. <clears throat> and the same, if V equals zero, uh, you, you remain there. Uh, so this is an exercise to do. And um, okay, you have four, uh, when you solve these equations, you have four uh, stationary points in the positive quadrant. So you have one here, Zero, zero is, is, is a stationary solution. You have this one here. So the new clients are here in, in, in green and blue. We've also um, 
uh, u equals zero is, is, is part of the Newark line here, and v equals zero is part of the Newark line here. And uh, you have also another point that you don't see here uh, because of this c, but c is, is very small. And so you have also this stationary point. So you have here you have two, here one, and here one. So you have, you have four stationary points. All right, so, uh, okay, when you do that, um, yeah, you, you can see the, yeah, you can see that, uh, yeah, you have uh, saddles, a lot of saddles, and this one uh, depends, it might be a sink or a source. And in fact, uh, you can show that uh, the, you have an explicit uh, formula for uh, an OPF bifurcation. And so uh, for fixed gamma one, you have a, an explicit uh, function of epsilon and K, uh, which gives you the line of the OPF bifurcation. Um, yeah, so you can apply the Poincaré Bedixson and uh, you either go to a limit cycle or you converge to U star V star. And so this is the line of the whole bifurcation. So below this line in the K epsilon plan, you have a limit cycle and above this line, U star V star is a sink. So for example, here, so K equals 60. For K equals 60, epsilon equals 0.4. So K 60, epsilon 0.4, you are here. And um, your trajectory goes to the sink. But if you go, if you, if you go uh, below a little bit in epsilon, then you have a limit cycle. And if you decrease epsilon more, uh, you, 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 you move away from the hope bifurcation and, uh, and your cycle is larger. All right, now you can just uh, do some numerics to, to look at the effects of uh, varying the parameters. So here varying epsilon. So here you have clearly a slow fast dynamics. Uh, th those are lines and you jump here and you have a limit cycle here. Um, so here you, are, you have a stink and here, uh, yeah, those are in the middle, right? And also um, you can look at uh, <coughs> varying K. So roughly speaking, so you have this hope bifurcation, but then if you increase K, roughly speaking, your, your, your limit cycle, when you have a limit cycle, the, the amplitude grows, uh, it becomes larger. And so, um, uh, so it's interesting to have uh, this, this, these things because we want to have some control on amplitude. We have to uh, gain some control on uh, is the system peri periodic or, or no, uh, etc. Uh, and also now you have this gamma, which allows also to, to control the frequency. So we all these things in, in mind to have some irregularity we vary those three parameters uh, stochastically. And with that, you can reproduce uh, signals that resemble much more uh, your signals here. You have the correlation between E and I, and you can reproduce some features observed 
in, uh, in, in real experiments. For example, here, awake versus anesthetized, you can reproduce that with the, the model. You can see here you have 40 and here you have 60. So the same is true here. And the amplitude here uh, is higher here than here. You see? All right, you can see also uh, this here. Uh, yeah, so here in, in function of time, you have your PSD. And so this is to uh, compare with that. Okay, you can also compare with, uh, with other uh, experiments. Uh, let's do just this one on the left. Uh, let's see for, for example, um, a frequency of 30, we'll have here 0.25. And this corresponds to some contrast, okay? And so you can see that here also, you have around 0.2 uh, in power and, and 25, 30 in frequency. Uh, here at the, 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 the maximum uh, of the power, um, we'll have uh, uh, 40 in frequency. And you can have also this with the simplified uh, uh, OGE model. Okay, so uh, so what we have done here, we have shown that uh, this simple model, uh, putting some stochastics in it, is able to reproduce some uh, some features relevant in the neuroscience context for rhythm. Uh, lastly, I just want to point out some interesting uh, phenomena. So from slow fast dynamics, so it's, it's well known, you go there and from there you go here, but you have no choice. Uh, then you have to stay here because uh, you are a very strong construction here. But here, when you cross this line, your UT becomes positive. So it's not easy to see why at this point, you, you explode here. Wh why is this C? What is the value of C? Um, all right, and you, you, you can have, a, uh, you can do uh, some, uh, you can have some insights from uh, a, a mathematical analysis, uh, but uh, this requires some more time to explain this in detail, so. Uh, Uh, all right, so that, that's that's the, the point of today. Uh, so what to do with this kind of system is that you can reproduce some um, some a mirror of the network activity with this single stochastic model. So um, I will stop today and uh, uh, this is just yes, this is just right. All right, so uh, if you want to, to work on, on these things, you can pick up any of the uh, related article and, and, and study it. Um, there's a few ideas here, but uh, yeah, any of these articles that I talked about, you can, you can pick up one and, and work on it. All right, so that, that's it.